Welcome back to the Building Multilanguage Reports for Power BI in 2023 video series. We're at part three, Generating Machine Translations. Of all the videos in this series, you'll find that this one you know, is the quickest and easiest. And why is that? Just because generated machine translations, in general, make things quick and easy. Translations Builder supports generating machine translations. You know, and it does so by making web API calls on an Azure service known as the Azure Translator Service. Now, the way things work is that Translation Builder provides commands to automate populating metadata translations. So as soon as you've created the Spanish column, click a button and we can automatically populate, you know, whether it's the final version or the first pass at creating translations, you know, you've moved ahead. Now, in order to use the capabilities of calling Azure Translator Service in Translations Builder, you know, you're going to need to have access to an instance of the Azure Translator Service, you know, in the form of having a key and a location value to configure. So let's kind of step through. If you have an Azure subscription, you know, one of the things that you could do is you could go to the marketplace and search for Translator. Once you find that translator, you can go ahead and create an instance of it, put it in a resource group, put it in a region, you know, so it's gonna to have to be in one particular data center and give it a name. You know, and then we can go ahead and click the create button. You know, there is a pricing tier. You know, for instance, S1 would be pay as you go and you pay $10 per 1 million characters. You know, once per Azure AD tenant, you can also create a subscription that allows you to use the Azure Translator service without cost, uh, you know, up to two million characters per month. You know, so you can look into that as well. You know, but once you've created an instance of the Azure Translator service in the Azure portal, you can simply click on the keys and endpoints page link. Once you get there, you know, they will have keys for you. You know, down below the keys there that aren't showing right now, you know, you can see that it's going to use East US two. And so, you know, once we click show keys, you know, we'll be able to take that key, copy it to the clipboard. And, you know, now we have the key and location that we need. Okay, now let's turn our attention, you know, back to Translation Builder, you know, and using this key and location we just got so we can access an instance of the Azure Translator service. Now, there is a menu command called configuration options. And when we you know, execute that command, it prompts us with a dialog and we can go ahead and enter in the Azure Translator Service key and location there. And what you'll see is that you know, once you do, the user interface lights up with extra commands that are only available when you have you know, configured support for the Azure Translator Service. You know, so now we're to the point where we've got this new column for Spanish, you know, while I could type in all those values, you know, it might be easier, you know, just to click the generate translations button and just kind of watch them fill in. Notice that, you know, as it's running, um, you know, a batch of calls, you know, to generate things, it's going to bring up a simple little dialogue just so you can kind of see the progress, you know, but when that's all done, you know, our column should be populated. Okay, now let's turn our attention, you know, back to Translation Builder, you know, and using this key and location we just got so we can access an instance of the Azure Translator service. Now, there is a menu command called Configuration Options. And when we, you know, execute that command, it prompts us with a dialog and we can go ahead and enter in the Azure Translator service key and location there. And what you'll see is that, you know, once you do, the user interface lights up with extra commands that are only available when you have, you know, configured support for the Azure Translator service. You know, so now we're to the point where we've got this new column for Spanish. You know, while I could type in all those values, you know, it might be easier, you know, just to click the generate translations button and just kind of watch them fill in. Notice that, you know, as it's running, um, you know, a batch of calls, you know, to generate things, it's going to bring up a simple little dialogue just so you can kind of see the progress, you know, but when that's all done, you know, our column should be populated. 
Okay, let's pick up our hands-on lab at exercise two. You know, so we're at a point where, let's go ahead and open up Translations Builder. In exercise one, we went through the process of adding, you know, our first secondary language Spanish and adding translations and testing them in the Power BI service. You know, so before we go ahead, notice that we have secondary languages, import, export translations, but we're missing something over here on the right hand side of the screen. So we'll go to Dataset Connections. I'll drop down Dataset Connections and there is the Configure Settings menu. So note that once we add our key, you know, so we'll copy and paste our key in there. We'll put in uh, East US 2 because that is our location. And watch what happens when I click Save Changes. You know, and all of a sudden we light up a new set of commands. You know, some of these commands are for a single language at a time, you know, and some are for all languages at once. You know, as a, for instance, let's go ahead and add a couple more languages. So in the lab, we're gonna have you add French. We're gonna have you add German, you know, and as you do that, you're gonna have two new columns. So now let's go up here and before I click on the Generate Translations button, what column do I want to translate? So I'll go ahead and pick French. And you know, as we click on that, you, know, you can see that it's making the calls across the network, filling that up. I could go ahead and switch uh, and add something else. You know, in our case right here, um, you know, let's say that we have a few other languages uh, you know, so we have Italian uh, and we have uh, Portuguese and I add those in. So now there's machine translations for all languages. You know, so I can either click generate all translations um, and that will fill in all of them, including the ones that already exist. Uh, or I'm going to click on fill all empty translations, you know, and what that's going to do, you know, it's going to, you know, allow me to quickly generate translations, uh, you know, for every translation in every column that has an empty value. Okay, now I went further than we are supposed to in the lab. We weren't supposed to add Italian and Portuguese, you know, so let's go ahead and, you know, get rid of those uh, two languages. And here's what we want. And one more time, you know, let's go through our testing procedure. So back to Power BI Desktop, we click on the Save icon. Now we go to the Publish tab and we're going to go ahead and click on publish. You know, we will find our dev camp labs workspace. We'll go ahead and publish. And yes, we are replacing the data set because now we have more translations, you know, that we would like to test. And, you know, now we should be able to, uh, you know, navigate here. Uh, and, you know, as I navigate here, Actually, I'm going to go over to my other browser instance. Uh, you know, why am I going over here? Because this, you know, is the browser uh, profile instance where I've added my bookmarks. You know, so what we should be able to, you know, test here uh, is that if we go look at English and we test Spanish, you know, and Spanish works just fine. And I look at the card visuals, I see that at the bottom. Well, now let's go up here and you know what have we added uh, first of all we added French in the region of France you know so we'll go ahead and we'll test that looks fine let's go ahead and you know add one more uh, bookmark for French let's go ahead and we need one more bookmark for testing which is German so Deutschland uh, German in Germany and we'll go ahead choose OK and we'll create one more bookmark here you know and so this kind of gets us through lab two and what we've done you know is we've quickly added you know these different languages a um, couple more things here is once you have added support uh, for generating machine translations you know let's say that uh, you know we do add another language uh, you know, so we go ahead and we add Dutch. Now, while I can click one of these buttons and fill everything at once, you know, it's also possible if I double click on a cell, 
it then kind of brings up a dialogue. And what I can do is I can get machine translation. And if I like it, I can accept it. And if I don't, I replace it. And then I just kind of keep working through like that. Um, you know, also note, okay. Sorry, Dutch, you were just here for demonstration purposes. We have to get rid of you now. Okay, let's move back to the slides just to summarize the four different commands there, um, you know, up top. First of all, there's generate translations. So that will act on a single column, a single language, and it will replace both empty and existing translations with new machine translations. If you pick fill empty translations, you know, what that will do is it will only replace cells that are empty. So once you've added a translation, fill empty translations doesn't touch that, it leaves it alone. And then we have something similar when you wanna work on all languages. So generate all translations is basically saying, let's throw everything away and replace everything with brand new machine translations. Uh, we also have fill empty translations, you know, for the all languages category, you know, which will basically just fill in what's ever missing in the translation grid. For completeness, one more little uh, trick is that once you have machine translations configured, one of the things that you could do is you could generate machine translations for a single row. If you go to the row header and you double click on it, you know, basically it will just do it for a single row at a time. And that's all folks for generating machine translations. Did I tell you it was gonna be quick and easy? Stay tuned for part four, creating and testing report label translations.